But at the same time, like I said, growing up in Inglewood, it's like, you know, you have that exposure to, um, you know, the streets. So. Right. So you pretty much, you was always pretty much self-aware of everything you was doing, everything that was going on. Definitely. Um, I was always self-aware, but it just got to the point to where, you know, I just wanted something different from myself. So yeah. um, it, I had to play on it. I had to act on it. Right. And I also think that, like, growing up, you know, where we all came from, because you're from Inglewood, Long Beach, but, I mean, ultimately, same, it's yeah, all the same, same thing. Same environment, yeah. We only play to the, the cars that has dealt with us, mm-hmm. dealt to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the stuff that we know now about, you know, the real estate we're going to get into, we didn't know that when we was younger. You Absolutely. Know? We knew that yeah. when we was younger. Who knows? We probably wouldn't have been on that side of the fence. Absolutely, yeah. We probably wouldn't have did the things that you, that you had to do, mm-hmm. you know? And um, so that's why one of the reasons why we created the podcast is just kind of... Uh, Inform the youth, or just inform people from Definitely. our environment, the children of the trenches, yeah, about the certain options or the certain um, things that they have, you know, to, you know, that they can use instead of, yeah, like how you say, you know, on that on that side of the fence, and um, so pretty much, when did you finally say, you know, I'm done, I'm through yeah. with that? What, you... what was the turning point? Right. I would say the turning point with me was the second time I was in solitary confinement when I was in prison. Okay. okay. Um, I was in a cell by myself for like six months. And one day um, I just woke up just kind of randomly and just start writing goals down. Mm. Um, I'm going to read a book a month, um, start saving, I'm going to build my credit. And even to start building goals outside of prison, um, you know, I'm not going to sell drugs no more. I'm going to surround myself with them people. So, like, you know, once you give yourself an aim, your conscience really only knows that. Like, right. your conscience really only knows that you tell it. So, if you tell it, sir, it's not going to believe anything else. So, yeah. um, that's something I kind of learned in doing that. Because once I looked up, after, I want to say a year, probably less, that whole list, I completed everything on that checklist. Well, from, from, from prison? Yeah. Well, and that's what I wanted to uh, really get into because um, a lot of people um, haven't really... I don't think we discussed wholesaling yet on the podcast. We, we mm-hmm. had a couple of real estate episodes, mm-hmm. but um, I don't think we've discussed wholesaling yet. Yeah. And I remember you was telling us that you were working on closing your first wholesale deal from prison. Yeah. <laughs> which was crazy to me because uh, I, think I, I think I told you I was out knocking on doors before trying to wholesale and yeah. doing pretty much foot to the pavement. And it's a very hard thing to do. Absolutely. So how did you, first, how did you even learn about wholesaling from prison? How did you find the deal? How did you, let's go through that. So, um, obviously in prison, you know, people have, you know, we get phones or whatever. Right. So, um, a lot of people get on the phone and do whatever stuff. So I was on the phone. I'm always, you know, trying to, you know, advance myself and trying to learn something new. And I just happened to run across Jay Morrison. Mm. Um, and, you know, I heard him talking about, you know, getting into real estate. And I've always been of the mind of a lot of people where, you know, you need a lot of money. Um, you need capital. You need all this knowledge. You need to be an agent or something. But right. he was talking about wholesaling. So I joined his academy. Really, really quick, really quick. Can you just explain to the people exactly what wholesaling is? So basically know? wholesaling is basically um, where you they call it equitable title or equitable interest in a property to where basically if you have a property you're looking to sell, um, I come to you, I negotiate a deal where, you know, you sell it at a certain price. Right. And me having the knowledge of knowing that I know investors that are actually looking to buy a property, I can actually, you know, sell my paper. That's all you're really doing. You're mm. selling your paper, you're signing your paper to another buyer for, for, a, for a markup. Right. So okay. if you have a property that you're selling that needs some work to it, and after it's all fixed up, say it's worth 750000 um, but it needs a certain amount of money to get it fixed up and get it put on the market. Um, I can come offer you a cash, what we call a cash offer on the property where say, um, you know, I offer you say 520, 530. Mm. Um, I get in a contract for 520. I turn around and network it to my buyers for 530, 540, where, you know, I make the difference of, you know, that 10 to $20,000. Exactly. You get your money as a seller. You're happy. My buyer, he has another property to work on. You know, that's how he makes his living. You get to move on with your life. And, you know, I've made some money in between. So you don't actually get paid until the deal is closed? Yeah. So once so once escrow closes, mm-hmm. so once title transfers from the seller to the buyer, that's where I make my money at the close of the escrow. Okay. Okay, great. So you so you found the Jay Morrison uh, program in prison? 
Yeah, so um, the Jay Morrison Academy, it kind of consisted of introducing you to real estate, which was wholesaling um, in terms of different strategies or going to the court building, um, skip tracing and things like that. And then he goes into um, investing Mm -hmm. um, and then he goes into like syndications in terms of buying apartment buildings and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So um, I was I just stayed with wholesaling because I'm like, you know, this is, you know, I wanted to. I grew up reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and stuff like that. So right. I was like, okay, this is my end. So you know, I jumped in. Okay. So um, so you found out about wholesaling from the program, and how did you actually find the first deal? How did you, you know, get in contact or? Oh, um, so <laughs> I would be up. How long did How long did it take you? Right. It actually took. I didn't actually close the deal until I actually got out of prison. Okay. But so it took me. So what I would do is, is I would be on my phone and like at night while my cell is sleeping I would actually be up on Google Maps mm. like now they call it virtual driving for dollars I was I didn't know that I was actually virtually driving I was doing it out of necessity I didn't yeah. have I couldn't go out and drive neighborhoods so yeah. I would actually be on Google Maps and go up and down streets And but you know Google Maps the houses on the pictures on there are probably a year or two old yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm going up and down the streets I'm like okay this is an ugly house write down the address skip trace it and they have a site called Intellius where you can, now they don't do it, but before you can skip trace a single house. Mm-hmm. So I would get the address, skip trace the single house, put their number on the list, and I would just create my list overnight. And the next morning, because my celly worked in the kitchen, so while he's at work, I'm cold calling. So <laughs> I would cold call for three hours. 